Sarah Vandervloot with Leading London. I'm here today with Wes Beharrell, who's a financial consultant with Investors Group. Thanks for joining us today, Wes. We're going to ask Wes some questions and hopefully be able to learn some valuable financial uh, planning advice. The first question I have for you uh, today, Wes, is a lot of people that are looking to buy a home would like to use an RRSP for a down payment. Can you expand on some of the um, ways that that can be made possible and also some of the uh, pros and cons of doing so? Okay. Well, first, Sarah, I'd like to thank you for having me here to speak with your clients. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to, uh, to really touch on the the pride in home ownership. You know, buying a home should have a great experience from beginning all the way to end. RSP loan is known as the home buyer's plan. Mm -hmm. And in current uh, market conditions, the way the government has laid it out currently is that uh, a home buyer can use $25,000 worth of their RSP if they save that much towards a down payment of their first home. Mm -hmm. Now it is important to understand that um, the home buyer's plan, it is a loan, right? But it's a loan from yourself to yourself. Um, it's not necessarily a loan from the government. So there's no real rush to paying back that right. loan. Now, when you borrow money from your RSP, uh, those people that have done it in the past, uh, they'll know that if they don't pay back some of that loan each and every year, that loan or a portion of that loan will be contributed to their income and they'll have to pay tax on that amount. Okay. What we at Investors Group or any consultant should tell you is that you only really, really need to pay down 1 15th of that loan per year to avoid that tax penalty. I know that we have previously spoken about uh, blended families and some of the um, complications that might come into play when purchasing a home. Can you give us some um, some tips for blended families? Absolutely, Sarah. You know, blended families, it's a, it's a topic that's really close to me because I come from a blended family. Mm -hmm. um, both my parents were divorced multiple times, right? They've been married, you know, a couple times each. Mm -hmm. And in all circumstances, different kids came into the relationship. So. When it comes to two parents coming together with separate families or two, two separate sets of dependents, what they need to understand is that it doesn't matter how much you love each other, if push came to shove, you will always take care of your own kids first. Mm -hmm. So when you have two couples coming to a family uh, or buying a home together and their intent is to one day pass their assets or their home to both sets of children, Often the fact is that once one parent dies, the second parent might side with their own children first and the first parent's children may be left out of the estate completely. So it's extremely important that everybody, it doesn't matter how much you love your, your new spouse or your spouse in general, there's a chance that someone will remarry, all sorts of things can happen in the meantime of owning that home. And if you want to protect your children, it's important to have a will. And not just a $500 cooker, cookie cutter will that you can get from any law office. You need to actually spend the time with a lawyer to make sure the, law, the will is drawn up, up accordingly. Now it's also um, what you need to keep in mind, lawyers do charge you by the hour. If you have a financial planner, talk to your financial planner. Your financial planner can lay out some of the processes you need to have in mind before you sit down in front of your lawyer so that you have the game plan in place. Right. And it won't cost you near what it'll cost the lawyer. Right. So definitely look at getting a will if you're buying a home as a blended family. It's a great tip. Now a lot of people these days own businesses or are self-employed like yourself and like myself. Um, can you? maybe touch upon some of the, the concerns for self-employed um, individuals? Absolutely. Uh, again, sir, this is, this is a great topic. You're asking some great questions, and uh, I'm glad you brought up self-employment. Um, being self-employed myself uh, and starting out in the business uh, a number of years ago, it, you, you quickly understand the need to show income. Um, as a self-employed individual, it's, it's, it's often tempting to write down as many of your expenses as possible Absolutely. to bring your income as close to zero so yes. you don't have to pay any taxes. Absolutely. That is horrible tax planning, mm -hmm. right? Nobody should tell you to write zero on your income. Right. Because once you claim zero on your income, you lose out on so many benefits. So you lose out on CPP, you lose out on RSP room, all those other other uh, features that the Revenue Canada gives to us, we lose out on by not paying taxes, okay? Now, we have also have the ability to earn $10,000 in income per year without having to pay tax. Right. So writing yourself down to zero never makes sense. Right. But coming back to the topic we're talking about today, try to buy a home with no income it's impossible. Right. You'll never qualify exactly. for a mortgage. So what I tell my business owners to do is to talk to their account and find out what they can actually feasibly yeah. do for write-offs without writing their income below what is feasible to get a mortgage. Right. So it might be important that regardless if your business makes $60,000, $70,000, $50,000 or $20,000, $40,000 or $50,000 might be the right mark for you to get that mortgage you want or it could be more. Right. Right. So it's important you talk to your accountant, talk to your financial advisor, find out where you should be. Now. 
you know, sometimes there may be a situation where you can't actually write down all your expenses and you may have to eat those expenses and not be able to write them down. That's the one of those losses you don't want to take. And at that point in time, it might be time to look at maybe talking to your lawyer, talking to your consultant, talking to your accountant and determining whether it's a good time to maybe incorporate your business. The final question that I have for you today is about rental properties. We come in contact as realtors with a lot of people that are interested in investing property uh, and ultimately making revenue off of renting uh, investment property. Can you tell us about some of the uh, risks and also some of the rewards of rental properties? Absolutely, Sarah. Again, another great question. Mm -hmm. Investing is investing is investing is investing. Absolutely. And every time you invest, investing means risk. Um, we look at the market today, the markets are horrible. Right? They, they've been bad for since 2008, they've been up, they've been down, and in the last, basically the last 10 years, anybody that's invested 10 years ago hasn't really made any money on their investment. So it's reasonable grounds for someone to say, well, why don't I just invest in real estate? My friend, my neighbor, my uncle, this guy I know, he's making a killing in real estate, he's always made a killing in real estate, real estate's a better way to go. You need to get the proper advice. Um, when you take on real estate, uh, it's, it's another investment, so when you want to buy a home, you understand by buying that second home or that rental property, you're actually buying into business, mm -hmm. right? So when you buy into business, and nobody buys into business unless they're there to make an income, make money, right. okay? So an investment needs Absolutely. to have a return on income. So sure, you know, you, you'll have tenants, and your tenants will, will, will pay you rent, and you with that rent, you pay down your mortgage, you pay for your expenses, and you get some additional tax deductions, and on and on it goes, and those are great benefits. Mm -hmm. But what landlords forget is they spend a lot of time with the rental properties. So if you have a full-time job or you're trying to build a business primary yeah. and the rental property is your secondary business and you're devoting time to that secondary business, what is your time worth to you? That's right. Right. It's very important. Um, what people don't often take into account is the risk that is involved with real estate. Mm -hmm. You look at the markets, they say the markets are too risky. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is own one rental property and have a vacancy for three or four months, mm -hmm. right? And not be able to pay your mortgage. That's risk. That's risk. Having tenants that aren't going to pay you rent, having mm -hmm. tenants that are going to damage your property, mm -hmm. right? You still owe property taxes. Yep. You still got to pay utilities. Yep. And if you don't know how to run a business, first get the advice on running that business. Mm -hmm. So talk to somebody that's had rental properties. Just don't try to jump in both feet mm -hmm. with no clue on what you're doing. Understand your numbers. Make sure you make a profit. Make sure your investment has a return on investment. Well, I hope that all of you have learned some tips, been informed about some financial planning, um, and if you have any questions, Wes's contact information will be at the end of the video. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it.